Welcome to the last chapter of our DVD, guys. I hope it's been fun for you. And right now, what we're going to be doing is <clears throat> something that would sound pretty, <laughs> you know, pretty crazy for someone who doesn't really know what's going on. Uh, we're going to be doing an opacity pass, basically a mask for vegetation without any opacity masks for vegetation. No transparency masks, no nothing. <laughs> Sounds kind of tricky, but remember when I was talking about the possibilities the gradient mapping gives you and how it's very nice to use for opacity purposes because you can just select the the black uh, value of the height, basically uh, like the background or whatever it is if you're making a plan uh, and just use it as your opacity mask value, just that set a very low cutoff and you would get uh, your mask. And this is something that actually got me thinking because as soon as I returned back to, you know, your classical diffuse back normal techniques, it kind of bummed me that I also have to, you know, waste the, the memory on a, on an opacity mask, which just seems to come, you know, for granted, uh, with the, with all kinds of gradient mapping techniques. This is like a very, very useful problem solving technique which actually most makes you go outside the boundaries of the problem, taking a few steps back, you know, see the larger scale of things. So you can see if this problem is even needed, if you can find a solution somewhere, you know, upstream. And this is something what we're going to do now, because this is actually hardly a, a shader tutorial here. What we'll do is we'll go and uh, sort of turn to Photoshop. So there you see our texture here and oops, full screen wasn't necessary. Anyway, I'm just going to uh, hide the histogram for now. Just uh, make it a navigator. You see, I have a, a, a grass texture here and uh, the interesting part is, and I'm just going to show it to you guys real quick. Here are sort of uh, the brightness values that we, we use. You see, it's like all the way from zero to well, brightness is here to to 99% so or like 255. And the thing is that you don't really want all of them in your textures whenever you're making a game because you're going to you're going to have to light all that in engine. So whenever you're having something that is completely black, you can't really make it too dark and it's going to be kind of hard to light it as well. And the same goes for something that's very bright because you won't even see the light contributions. So the thing is that usually you sort of try to keep in that kind of a range, which is somewhere in the middle. So your texture generally shouldn't have pure whites or pure blacks. And this is something that you can use to your advantage because you can see here, uh, I'm having my diffuse folder. And what I'm doing right now over the top is uh, I have a level uh, modifier adjustment layer. And here you can actually move the output level. So what I'm doing, I'm just sort of clamping my textures to 0.32. So you can see, I don't know if it will update or not, and if it will even be visible at this point, but just uh, something for you to know is that we are clamping all our pixels to 32 brightness values, which means that we can't have anything that will be darker than zero uh, than 32 on a scale from zero to 255. But we, we are doing that through a mask, through our opacity mask. And if you take a look here, this is basically the mask. And you can see that it's kind of jagged in a way, but we don't really care about that now. Just like for you to check out and see the difference. This is our jagged mask uh, that we're going to be using as an opacity mask. And I mean, I mean it's going to end up looking like that in engine anyway, because for opacity, for alpha testing, you can either have visible or invisible, which means you're going to have that kind of jagged lines. Uh, so yeah, and since I applied, uh, this mask to our, uh, only to the diffuse folder, uh, we'll basically throw a mask to what is contained in the diffuse folder. I have my background here, so you can see, I can just uh, flip the color and you can see to what the levels are actually applied. And you see, actually nothing changes in the color. That's because when your textures are done properly, you, you're supposed to have nothing in there. So that's a good thing. Uh, but now here comes the trick. We can go here into our uh, color picker for our background color. And <laughs> you see there is green, there is red, and 
mix in in between and we get all kinds of vegetation colors technically and the good part is blue doesn't take any part in it i mean you can see that as we move the values here the blue contribution stays at zero which technically means that uh it's black the blue channel in the background at this point is black and even if we go uh like up top to the red yeah you see as soon as you start getting it desaturated yeah the blue kicks in but when it's fully saturated go ahead choose any kind of color you like something that will look greenish uh, good enough the closest to your uh diffuse texture and just keep it like that and <laughs> Now, let, let's just preview that. I mean, I'm just going to select everything, create a separate layer out of it, and view my blue channel. So there we go, guys. You see that the black in the blue channel is actually black. Well, I mean, it, it, it is a mask right now at this point already, which is uh, pretty awesome. So now, for example, when we go back to UDK, what we can do, you see I have my texture here. I plug it into Diffuse, right? I go here. I set it to masked. And uh, UDK actually allows you to do soft opacity masking, but that's not a tutorial on that. If you ever want to do that, just go to UDK, UDN, UDN.com, or just Google UDN opacity, uh, soft opacity masks. And you, you, there is like a pretty nice write-up, which is pretty self-explanatory. Self so yeah, you see, that was so easy, right? I just plugged it in, plugged my blue channel, and you actually probably want to pay attention here because I adjusted my opacity mask clip value. So I, if I reset it to default, you're going to get something math massive because it's 0 0.33333, uh, two more zeros at the end. But yeah, you see that it's too high. Mm -hmm. We uh, set our uh, uh, blue channel diffuse texture values to start from 32 art out of 255 which technically makes it one eighth which would be the value of uh yeah 0125 but then there is some compression going on and we really don't care about it because technically all we want is our black to create a mask so this is what we're going to do and you see that there is some uh sort of issues up top there with the edge and uh you should probably fix that with uh in your texture or we can go here and just click clamp because it's not supposed to be tileable so this is probably just because of the mipping here and these pixels at the bottom bleeding up top so now that we set it to clamp yeah i see we're good so you see how we've gotten ourselves an opacity mask without uh, actually wasting another texture or doing anything and yeah i know it looks kind of jaggedy but that's the way the mask looked in Photoshop too, so you can always, you know, work on it a bit more, make it a bit more precise and everything. But there is another trick, you know, what? let's say we want translucency. Why just uh, limit ourselves to zero or one values for our brightness? Let's go further. Can we do that? Well, yes, we can. So, <laughs> okay, I'm deleting my layer that I made here. And yeah, you see, this is our um, mask value. But now what I did, I just uh, gosh and blurred it. That's all I did here. And now I'm actually using that as a, I'll be using that as an opacity mask for my layers here. Well, uh, translucency mask, whatever you want to call it in Photoshop, is just like the alpha layer mask. Yeah. So I'm turning that off by now. And actually to paste something into a mask, what you do is you uh, select it here and, you know, control shift uh, C to just copy everything you see on screen. And then I'll remove yeah, the deselect. I'll remove the mask from here. You see the mask is gone, but now I want to make a new one. How do I do that? I go into quick mask mode, which is Q, and I just copy paste and it copy pastes whatever you had in your uh, buffer. And so now when I click Q again to get out of that mode, you see that I'm getting uh, some sort of selection that was there. But if I turn off the green, you see that now it's sort of very diffused. That is the blurred mask that we used. And now I'm going to once again go ahead and you know what? This is where the histogram might come in handy. You see all those values in here? Uh, now it's going to be tricky. Okay, so the the levels have our sharp mask that we had. And when we click it, you see that there is some movement here. Everything just sort of moves aside. But you can see that our 
blue mask in here is pretty busy. It, there is some info. So for example, let's just copy our mask that we have right now to the layer six, whatever it is that I created just as a, as a buffer to just keep switching the masks and then just copy the mask that we had from our levels back again. And just notice the changes in the, in the blue. You are actually creating values there. These, uh, the, what you see here are just the intermediate values that represent your mask. This is it. This is your mask in there right now because nothing but your mask has a value, has values in that range. So when I save it and I import, uh, that stuff into UDK, you're going to see how that goes right now. So I'm going to grab a texture that I call, uh, exaggerated. So let's just copy it. Oh, this grass exaggerated. But now let's make a tr uh, translucent material and let's see how that will work out for us. We're going to use that for diffuse and for translucency. We're going to just, yeah, opacity. And you see that it's weird. Something's wrong in here, right? It's like, it's just too transparent now. But let's try and extract that mask and see how that goes. So in order to do that, let's grab a constant clamp. And let's just clamp everything in our blue channel to, okay, uh, 32 is one eighth of uh, 255, well, 256 technically. So this is when you're, uh, you know, counting in the usual numbers. Let me just grab a constant. It's uh, 0 0.125. So if we clamp it to it, which basically means that we get rid of all the values that were up there, well, that were higher than this. Oh yeah, that's a constant clamp. Ah, my bad. Yeah, I just want to write it in here. And then we probably want to crank up the brightness a bit, just so it would become more visible. So now I'm grabbing the multiply node. I'm just going to multiply it by, let's say, 20. Oops. And let me just plug that in into opacity. There you go. Check it out how nice and smooth it is. And we just did that. We just did that with nothing but a single texture, no additional maps or masks or anything. And we got that from just blurring the pixelated opacity mask. Yeah, this is <laughs> the kind of results that you can get. And I mean, uh, let's just try multiplying it a few times just to see where it gets us. But you can totally see that it's like full blown uh, system that is totally working. And uh, when you're using a traditional uh, opacity mask for the alpha testing, the mipping uh, uh, sort of bleed, bleeds the pixels and it becomes like way, way obvious in the distance. And uh, it's not like that with a well, way, way obvious is probably too strong a word to use for that because if you're not looking for it, you have no idea that it is there. So let me just change that for a sec. Let's just go back to mask and you see our opacity mask is in here. And yeah, when you go back, you see that it's kind of uh, too intense and you probably might want to uh, play with your texture a bit for that uh, and for with a cutoff value in here. But I mean, uh, yeah, the exaggeration just keeps growing, but it's not as bad as it looks when you put it into the game, because here the preview is like the, the worst kind of conditions because it's uh, behind a black background. But if you uh, go to YouTube, you know, find my channel and just check out the, the swamp video that I have there, every single piece of vegetation there is made using this mask technique. And I bet you can't tell the difference. That's the thing. So just play around with it. Well, when you go to uh, the translucent, it's almost indistinguishable. And that is pretty awesome. So, I mean, yeah, that depends on what kind of mask you were going to use with your stuff. And one thing to actually know here is, let me just save my package here. Uh, yeah, whatever it is. And you'll see that our textures will actually get compressed. And this is a slight problem that you might be getting here because alpha channel is actually way less compressed. But yeah, as you can see, it actually turned out not that bad. So, uh, I mean, if you would compare it to your regular uh, alpha channel texture, because alpha channel gets, is like two times uh, 
the amount of memory that your average channel gets. And still, I mean, you can see the results that we're getting right now. It, it's like no artifacting, no mipping, no whatever. It works like a charm. So yeah, you can, you know, kiss your uh, transparency masks for vegetation. Goodbye. Because from this point on, you just don't need them anymore. This is like a very cheap trade-off and saves a lot of memory. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. And, you know, thanks for sticking around for the whole ride. I appreciate that a great deal. <laughs> Catch you later.